Hi everyone, thanks for watching this vlog today. Uh, I'm really thrilled that you're taking the time to watch this as we at Compass talk about our values in this COVID-19 arena. It's really changed a lot uh, and it's really made us be very intentional about who we are. And we want to encourage you to take the same journey with us. Study our values, get to know them, and figure out how to best apply them to your life. So today, though, I'm going to talk about excellence. If you go to our website, you'll see that we have our values written out there and their definitions. And the definition for excellence is really important. The definition of excellence is never settling for mediocrity, but always striving for everyone's personal and professional maturity. So let me unpack that a little bit. Mediocrity. What is that? I define mediocrity as doing meh, what's okay, just what's required. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, a teenager, I was not a great student. And I'm a smart guy, so I could take tests and get decent grades. But I, I didn't really apply myself in class. I hated the busy work. And so I got B's. I got some A's too, but I got B's mostly. I was a B student. And you know what? B's get degrees, as they say. But you know what also B's develop? Habits of laziness that in a competitive environment or in a stressful environment are tough to overcome and really show up as excellent. And that happened for me. When I became a grown-up, I realized that, man, life is hard and you got to really work a lot harder than I thought you did to, to make it in this world. So that was kind of a downside to me. I mean, great. As a teenager, I had more free time. <laughs> I got to goof around. But when I became an adult and I had to put childish ways behind me, that was a tougher one to put behind me. I had great people around me. I had good mentors, so they kind of didn't let me slack off. But it was a bit more of a painful process, and it probably slowed my career path just to skosh. That's mediocrity. Let me tell you what mediocrity isn't, though. Mediocrity isn't making mistakes. Mediocrity is making mistakes and not caring. We train all of our people at Compass who are in leadership on how to manage people's mistakes. In fact, if you've ever been in a written warning yourself, or if you've, uh, if as if you're a client or a family member, and you're and you know that your staff has been corrected on something, most likely the person who did the correcting received personal training from me on how to do this. So hopefully it went well, and if not, I'm sorry. <laughs> but let me tell you what I tell people. We don't just fire people at Compass because they made a mistake. I do not want anybody to be rejected. To lose a relationship, even a professional one, just because they made a mistake. Now, obviously, there are some mistakes that you just kind of got to, you know, uh, cut ties with, you know, abuse, that type of stuff. But that, that's those are extreme outliers that rarely happen. We do have staff that make mistakes. I make mistakes. The question isn't to me, did you make a mistake? The question is, did you own it and not blame somebody else? Yes. Did you say sorry? And did you commit to making it better? Recently at Compass, we had a pretty big, hairy mistake that I'm responsible for that we've had to deal with. If you're involved with QSP, you know that we had a big, big crash. Our servers went down back in the data center, and it really disrupted our operation. Now, I didn't cause that to happen. It's not my fault. It wasn't me who did it. I was relying on other relationships, and those other people, um, their teams had some breakdowns and made some mistakes. That doesn't mean I'm off the hook, though. Maybe I didn't cause the mistake, I'm not at fault, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is that I am responsible. So I'm owning it, and I owned it. Sadie and I worked tirelessly, our, and we drove our team to be laser focused and work tirelessly to get QSP back up and running the way it should be, so that we would have a tool that would work for us. So I owned it. Second thing I did was I spoke to my team, and I spoke to people who are disrupted by this, and we sent out messages to our customers. We said, we are sorry, this hurt you. How can we fix it for you in the short term? So we said, we're sorry. And the third thing is, we worked hard to fix it. And the things that cause this breakdown, they will never have, that breakdown will never happen again like that because we have fixed the things that led to it to begin with. Even if those things weren't actions I took or didn't take, I worked with the other people and they have applied the appropriate policies and the appropriate systems to prevent those breakdowns from ever happening again. So yeah, we screwed up. But uh, but does QSP deserve to be fired because of that? No. QSP and Eric owned it, said sorry, and worked to fix it. 
That's what excellence looks like. It doesn't look like you never make a mistake. That's not mediocrity. Mediocrity is saying, eh, bummer. Sorry, it worked out so badly for you, and hopefully it won't happen again. That's mediocrity. That's not what we did. We said, yep, it was ours. We are sorry, and here's what we've done to fix it. That's what excellence looks like. Let me give you an example with Encompass. We recently changed, revolutionized our staffing schedule into what we call the circle model. We did this in response to a potential virus infection of COVID-19, and, we and we realized, oh my gosh, if this one person got it, tens, like nearly 40 other people could be infected because that person had a lot of staff, but also worked with a lot of clients who had other staff. It was, it just would have gone out there. So we realized that in this environment, in this, in this COVID-19 environment, that is not a sustainable model and it's not safe. Even though we liked it, because we liked people having flexibility. Staff liked to go to a bunch of different houses. And clients liked having the variety of folks in their home, but that's not excellent. Furthermore, what that does is it makes it a lot harder to keep people trained and working excellently with an individual client. So we made that change. It was hard, it was disruptive, but we did it. And, and so far the results have been very good. So that's what excellence does. It looks at a problem, doesn't run from it, and tries to make it better. It own, you're owning it and you try to make it better. That's what mediocrity doesn't look like. Now the last part of that value, personal and professional maturity is also important. Because on a personal level, you and I have to continue growing. Now maturity isn't the gray hairs here, the wrinkles there, or, or what have you. Maturity is actually being a better person today than I was yesterday. It's my personal goal that when I'm 80 years old, I'm the guy at Safeway that the cashiers are happy are in line. I don't know if you've ever been behind that guy. He's kind of fun. He's happy. He's, he's a little vivacious. He's in a good mood. He's kind to the cashier. He's kind to other customers. He might be slower because he's older and he's not as fast as you and I are when we're in our 20s, 30s, and 40s, but he's still a joyful human being and people are happy to be around him. I want to be that guy. But you know what it takes to be that guy? A daily choice today to continue to grow, to grow in kindness, to grow in self-control, to grow in being long-suffering with people when they're grumpy. Because that guy, he's not mad when the cashier in front of him is having a bad day. Instead of going, that cashier's making me rough, making me kind of ruining my day, he says, wow, that cashier's having a rough day. How can I help him? I want to be that guy. But it takes a lifetime to grow into that and a lifetime of striving to continue to be more mature as a person. The same thing applies to us professionally. If you're not continuing to grow as a worker at Compass, um, then you're kind of growing as a former worker at Compass. And let me say something about that really quickly. I train all of our people when it comes to corrective conversation, whether it's written warnings, whether it's coachings, or even those separation meetings. I do the training and here's what I tell people. I tell them we do not fire folks because they make a mistake. Everybody makes a mistake. I make mistakes. You make mistakes. We all make them. The question is, do we own them and make them better? See, making a mistake is a sign of humanity. We all make them. Sometimes you need to know more. Sometimes it takes practice to learn something. I'm sure the first time you started using QS Med or the first time you started driving a car, you weren't the best driver or the best user of the application. I'm sure the first time you tried to learn a new skill, it took some practice. You made some mistakes, but you learned from them. It's when people stop learning and just keep making them and go, eh, whatever. That's when we have a problem. The people who don't last that compass aren't the ones who make mistakes. They're the ones who don't keep trying to do better in light of those mistakes and aren't humble and willing to say, oops, sorry, would you help me do better next time? That guy, I always want on my team. I can always help him and I can trust him because I know his heart's in the right place. That's what we mean by excellence. That you don't settle for being mediocre, that you're constantly trying to do better at whatever you're doing, and you're always striving to grow as a person and as a professional. All right, hope that makes sense. I hope that's helpful. Um, thanks again for striving for your growth as we all work to grow together. And it's interesting in these environments how they catalyze growth. And I think we're growing a lot. God bless you, have a great day.